If you've ever tried to do efficient interplanetary missions before, it's likely that you've encountered this problem. Everyone's been telling you how efficient the NERV nuclear engines are, so you've slapped together a nice big mothership with NERV engines and plenty of liquid fuel. You get ready to do your burn to transfer to EVE, and then you notice something. If you start the burn at the indicated time, you're pointing almost directly at Kerbin. And even worse, as the burn progresses, you dip lower and lower into Kerbin's atmosphere, risking damage to sensitive experiments and solar panels. As you get towards the end of the burn, you notice something even more worrying. Not only does your trajectory not match up at all with what the maneuver node predicted, but you've used hundreds of meters per second extra delta V. Ultimately, what this boils down to is that efficient engines tend to have low thrust to weight ratio. Low thrust to weight ratio means it takes a long time to do your burn. A long time to do your burn means you start a significant fraction of your orbit around Kerbin, meaning you're pointing at Kerbin. Anytime you're not pointing prograde, you're losing delta V to cosine losses. Anytime you're not at periapsis, you're losing delta V due to not extracting maximum possible Oberth effect. So how do you solve this? Well, the answer is to do what's called split burns. That is, you perform multiple miniature burns at your periapsis, one after the other on successive orbits, and build these up together to get your final ejection. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you the method that I use to perform split burns without messing up the accuracy of my transfers. This tutorial will be made using only features available in stock KSP. That said, let's get into the tutorial. A split burn transfer involves three sections. First, you have the periapsis kicks, the split burns themselves. Second, you have a phasing burn to make sure that the timing lines up and you arrive back at periapsis right on time to do your final ejection. Lastly, we have the final ejection itself, where we eject from Kerbin and get our encounter with our target body. The exact number of periapsis kicks done is entirely up to you, but is a fine balancing act between the amount of time you want to spend on it, the amount of efficiency you're looking for, and the amount of TWR you have to play with. Here, we will be using four periapsis kicks of 200 meters per second each. After our fourth kick, this leaves us in an orbit just under moon altitude, which means we have no risk of our orbit being disturbed by a moon encounter, while allowing us to slash the cost of our final ejection to EVE to under 300 meters per second. First things first, it's going to take extra in-game time to do split burns, so you're going to want to launch ahead of your intended transfer window. In this tutorial, I'm launching about 20 days ahead of the EVE transfer window. I create the maneuver node for my EVE transfer exactly as I normally would, except that I make it 20 days in the future, at the time of the intended transfer. Once we've found and tuned our EVE encounter, the actual magnitude of this maneuver node isn't important. What's important is the where and the when, where it is on our orbit, and when we perform it. Now it's time to begin setting up our split burns. To set up the first of our periapsis kicks, we're going to drop an empty node onto our next orbit and align it with the future ejection node. Then we're going to add 200 meters per second to it. Once we've done this, you'll see that the final ejection node is way out of whack. This is not a concern because we'll go ahead and get it realigned later with the phasing burn. For now, we're just going to go ahead and execute our first periapsis kick. Once it's done, we're not going to remove the node. Instead, we're going to add one orbit to the node, warp to it, and then perform it again. After the second time, we'll repeat the process. Add one orbit, warp to the new node, and perform it. Once we've done this four times, the periapsis kick phase is over, and we're ready to do the phasing burn. We'll set up our phasing burn using the same node that we used to set up our periapsis kicks. You'll notice that we only used about one day out of our allotted 20 to perform the periapsis kicks, so we're going to take this node and set it multiple days in the future so that it's only a couple of orbits before our final ejection. Then, we carefully tweak the delta V on it so that we take our final ejection and line it back up on top of our phasing burn. Once we've done this, all that's left is to execute the phasing burn, and then get ready for the final ejection. 
Due to how sensitive orbital period is to very small changes in the delta V of the phasing burn, we're probably not exactly lined back up after we've completed it. This isn't really much of a problem, as even deviations of several hours will not have much effect over the final ejection. We need to go ahead and subtract the 800 meters per second from the periapsis kicks and the small amount of delta V from the phasing burn. At this point, we'll probably have to play around with the timing and the delta V of our node a little bit to get everything lined back up like we want it. Once we've gotten everything lined up how we like, all that's left is to warp to the node and execute it. And just like that, we have performed a split burn transfer to EVE. A couple notes here. You'll notice that this ejection burn was purely prograde, but this technique will work for burns that also have a normal component. In that case, the math is a little more complicated. What you'll have to do is figure out the ratio between your prograde and normal components, and then account for that in your split burns. For example, if the full burn has a prograde component of 1200 meters per second, and a normal component of 60 meters per second, that gives a ratio of 20 to 1. So our split burn, instead of being just 200 meters per second prograde, would have an additional 10 meters per second normal component. Well, I think that about wraps up this tutorial then. I hope this video proves useful to you in learning to build higher efficiency missions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.